Keyboards are a lifeline of text expression, one might say, but should one? Um, oh, uh, you mean... Uh... Huh? <laughs> Eber? Oh, oh, and did I also mention... Oh, <laughs> All right, welcome to our best and worst keyboards of 2019. It's been a good year in terms of unique releases. Let's begin after this. The NMX T50 Axe air cooler now comes in this gorgeous white finish with an addressable RGB high pressure fan along with a patented air guide grill to increase airflow. The Vortex differential fin design helps increase air convection around the heat pipes so that your CPU can stay nice and cool. Learn more in the description down below. As usual, all the products will be listed in the description below. Thank you very much. The first keyboard I want to highlight as one of my best on the list is the Ducky 12 SF. This is a 65% keyboard that is portable, affordable, cute in some ways, and it's currently on my workstation desk. And it's got so many yes features, including a dedicated arrow keys with delete page up and down. So basically the same functionality on the right side as a TKL keyboard, but much smaller. And since the F keys are built into the top row, you're also saving space there. We have a removable non-braided type C cable, extra set of colored accent keycaps for white or black models. The keycaps are PBT double shot with beautiful light shine through, although with some inconsistent here and there. The stabilizers are fine, the space bar is beautiful, and you can pick this board up with many flavors of MX switches, and this is by far the smoothest and most satisfying MX Brown keyboard that I've used with this soft tactile point. I personally don't use any of the secondary functionalities like mouse navigation, but it's really cool to have them built in, plus you can record all type of macros to secondary layers or different profiles to really make this keyboard your own. And here's a quick sound test. The next worthy keyboard on my list is the SteelSeries Apex Pro. This one comes in full size and TKL options as well with many add-on features like a full size illuminated USB pass-through for peripherals, a very comfortable magnetic wrist rest, a monochrome display that's pretty useless outside of showing GIFs and if you want to change up color or profiles without accessing the software. So in that sense is actually pretty useful. The best thing about the keyboard are the new OmniPoint switches that are linear and smooth, remind me of Gator reds that I absolutely love. They are light at 45 grams and have adjustable actuation point that you can set yourself between 0.4 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters. This gives you an option to create your own speed switch, which is so cool by setting the actuation point to be quite high. Or if you love to bottom out and love just a totally different feeling keyboard, set the maximum uh, actuation to 3.6 and Bottom out, my friend, it's nice. We've seen similar designs from wooden keyboards by letting you set the actuation point among a range, but it's awesome to have more options on the market, especially from SteelSeries that is a mainstream gaming brand. Now we have adjustable actuation point for the masses. That is if you're willing to spend a lot of money as the Apex Pro and the TKL are quite expensive, but they sound fantastic. Let's move on to the next special keyboard. I just reviewed it after two months, the Razer Huntsman TE. This is the gaming TKL keyboard that surprised everyone in the community because Razer listened and delivered. We've got a removable type C cable that you can swap for something fancy. The bottom row is standard for keycap swapping. The included keycaps are double shot PBT with a coarse texture that feels nice, but picks up dust on the sides over time. And there's some lighting inconsistencies throughout. Otherwise the illumination is absolutely beautiful and bright. Plus the keyboard comes equipped with Razer's red optical switches that are insanely fast and light actuating at one millimeter and only require 40 grams of force to actuate. This switch will not be for everyone. It took me about a week to get used to it. And after two months of usage, I still sometimes rest my fingers on the keys and activate shift a W or space bar or something like that on the keyboard. You just have to be cautious because the keys are so light, the weight of your hand and your fingers will depress the key. But this is definitely my keyboard of choice for gaming and the fast and light switches is what you crave. The Huntsman T is an easy recommendation for me as long as you don't mind this particular sound.
And the last best keyboard I have on the list is the Drevo Blade Master TE. This one's also a TKL keyboard that is quite basic, but affordable. I don't mind the angular frame. It's still low profile, but not just a rectangular slab. The bottom row is standard for keycap swapping. The cable, unfortunately, is non-removable, but it is not braided and quite flexible, which is nice. The keycaps are standard ABS, but we have this multifunction wheel on the side that you can macro to suit your work style and gameplay. And we have four flavors of Gatoron switches, with reds being my favorite, which is why I love this keyboard so much. There's also a wireless pro version of the Blade Master with Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz connections. This one comes with MX Cherry switches, a Type-C cable, a silver body instead of black, and the same custom wheel on the left side. I would actually not recommend the wireless model because the wireless connectivity ironically, has been kind of wonky after the review. So switching between Bluetooth and uh, 2.4 gigahertz did not fully work as advertised, which is why I would still recommend the Blade Master TE because it's wired. It's still the one I use today. It's working fine. And the sound profile is delicious. All right, switching gears, let's talk about the most disappointing keyboard of the year for me, which is so unfortunate because I love the original. Here we have the G Pro X from Logitech. I will say I love the hot swappable nature of the switches on the mainstream gaming brand keyboard. And you don't need to buy Logitech's branded kale switches, although they do recommend it because of some tolerances. Don't listen to them, my Halo clears fit just fine. They did not update the connection, it's still using micro USB. The bottom row is not standardized despite having such an awesome feature like swappable switches. The keycaps are ABS glossy land and the price at $150 for the keyboard and $50 for a set of switches is just too much when things like GMMK TKL exist that offer a swappable frame, just like the G Pro X, with so many switch variations at the much lower price point. I love the G Pro X keyboard, but having a hot swappable frame doesn't justify its price. They should have done more. Now let's hear what the boys have to say for their best and worst keyboards. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun editing this D. All right, Dimitri, so my pick for the best keyboard of 2019 has to go with the Logitech MX keys. Ever since I reviewed this keyboard, this has been my daily driver because I love the low profile nature of this keyboard. But most importantly, Logitech Flow is absolutely fantastic with this keyboard. I'm using the Master 3 mouse along with this keyboard uh, and I can easily switch between my notebook and my desktop PC by just using a single pair of peripherals, which is awesome. The keys themselves have great feedback. It's obviously not gonna give you that mechanical feel when you're using a traditional mechanical keyboard, but the MX keys is also a wireless keyboard and the battery lasts really long. Uh, it also charges via USB Type-C and it supports fast charging, which is nice. My pick for the worst keyboard of 2019 has to be the Cooler Master SK650. In fact, they have three SK series. It's the SK lineup. So why is it my worst keyboard of 2019? Well, even though the Cooler Master targeted this as a low profile mechanical keyboard, it really isn't low profile because compared to a traditional mechanical keyboard, it's really not that slim, especially when compared to the uh, MX keys from Logitech but also the switches are absolutely horrible. I mean, there's no, there's just no life to them when you're typing on it. To make things worse, the spacing between individual keycaps is not even, and it's also very sharp, so it makes typing super uncomfortable, and the backlighting is also pretty bad, and it's just way too expensive. Okay, so I'm not a keyboard guy, but I did have one choice, and that is the G-Skill KM360, because it basically goes against of what a lot of other companies are trying to do, which is hike up the prices of peripherals as much as they can. This thing is not gonna be the best keyboard, but at 50 bucks, if you can still fire for 50 bucks, it has everything. It has a good frame, it has Cherry MX red switches, and what I did is I just popped on a $25 HyperX putting keycap set. With this combination, I've been using this as my daily driver for gaming for the better part of four months now. And it's really held up well. I'm super happy with it. Um. So my worst choice, and I know some of you will probably say that I'm absolutely crazy, but this is the Logitech G915. You can actually see it's getting some dust on it because I haven't been using it. I don't like this thing. 
Unlike what the G skill is, this thing represents everything that's wrong with the peripheral space right now, or at least the gaming peripherals. It's expensive, it tries too hard, it does have a really good wireless connection, but at $330 Canadian for an oversized quote-unquote slim keyboard that's not really slim, to me, this is where peripherals shouldn't head, especially when you have custom keyboards, you have some amazing keyboards from the likes of Armillo, from Leopold that you can get for a third of the price. This is my pick for the worst keyboard of the year. All right, so that was fun. I hope you enjoyed. If you have a favorite keyboard of the year, what is it? And do you agree with our worst keyboard selections for 2019? Keystrokes down below. All the links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. We'll see you guys in the next video. But if I could keep this by, by the front entrance and if somebody tries to come into the into the house, I could just beat them with it. Let's not. <laughs> it's sharp enough. Yeah.